Look at the mind. And allow the mind to download all of its content. Something like the memory is suspended temporarily. Which means, I am, but without a past. Think of it, I am, very much, I am. but without a past. That is amazing. Take that amazing truth into you. I am very much but without a past. Understand the enormous significance of that fact. I am, but without a past. Having settled the memory, the past, which is the mind, now I look at myself, I am. I am the peace. Shanti. I am the silence. Nishabda. I am not linguistic because the language is the memory, the past, and put aside. I am existential, not linguistic anymore. I am. I am nameless. Name is the past. I am formless. I am spaceless.
I am timeless. I am harmony. Totally free from conflict. I am the being. I be. Love to being is like fragrance to the flower. I am the love. I am the being which is love. Love to the being is like fragrance to the flower. The flower is, and the flower spreads the fragrance all around. I am, and I love all. I am and I know. Without perception, I know. Without the agency of thought, I know. I know without any means because I am the knowingness. I be and I love. Love and harmony are my essence. I be and I love. One word, I am the divinity myself, feel the divinity in you, put aside all inhibitions, and all opposition if any, Own your divinity. Feel the divinity deep within. Divinity is love. I am the divinity. A 
अहम ब्रह्मास्मि स्पेसलेस आया टाइमलेस आया you embrace your real nature by declaring to yourself aham brahmasmi i am the being spaceless and timeless it's not a chant it is not a thought it is the feeling in the depth of my being aham brahmasmi अहम ब्रह्मास्मि it is and relax open the eyes slowly om shri guru bhyo namaha hari he om shruti smruti purana namalayam नमा भगवत्दशंकोकशंकोगासायन so you can use aham brahmasmi direct not the chant saying aham brahmasmi aham not that, that is not what it is It's certainly not the thought it is the feeling you know what i mean what you feel the divinity within so that is what you are so it should not be difficult and uh, use that aham brahmasmi as a panacea for all the ills of worldly life you can so that is that can be used and uh, that is the big highest truth and highest medicine for all problems of life and what needs to be done in the life will be done anyway but you can use it as a as a nectar or embryosa what are they call okay so that is the verse padacharam evam nirantara krata brahma eva asmi iti vasana harati avidya vikshepan rogan eva रसायनम 
एवं इन दिस वे ब्रह्म एव अस्मि आई एम इन डीड द ब्रह्मन द स्पेसलेस एंड टाइमलेस रियालिटी इति दस निरंतर करता practiced non stop vasana the deep rooted impression avidya vikshepan the the distractions caused by ignorance harati drives away like what rasayanam the medicine Rogan Eva, the disease, like the disease, yes, yeah, you got it. So you can use it. Suppose uh, you remember the past and feel unhappy, you tell yourself, "Aham Brahmasmi." You have to guide yourself into that vision. Telling means that you have to be the guru to yourself. Suppose you have some illness. You tell yourself, "Aham Brahmasmi." Very simple. And uh, uh, any distraction, except by the distraction, the mind comes out with its own logic uh, and it puts all obstacles. That is what the mind does. You want to be nice to your uh, neighbor, but the mind says something: "Oh, he is not worthy," or whatever. That is how the mind says. and uh, sometimes the mind may be uh, pointing out a fact of life but still you can put it aside and say hello to the neighbor you can say that in spite of the aggressive attitude or whatever you can still say hello to the neighbor he will be surprised a bit doesn't matter okay so do that you are the brahman and then you tell yourself I, am i not in love Am I not really love? What is the problem? You have the heart to love, right? When you have the heart to love, then what is your problem in uh, uh, in uh, realizing that you are the Brahman? Because love is God. Brahman is love. Brahman is not some gentleman sitting somewhere. All the descriptions of a gentleman, etc., are anthropomorphic. You should not forget that. they are all they all came from a human mind so you should not forget that like you worship an image is not the image made by human hand and then okay it is made by human hand but the image uh, the hand that made the image is not the origin of the image okay but then what is the origin of the image the thought is thought not human therefore the image has its origin in the human thought and then in the human hand is it not so therefore uh, so you can easily understand that uh, the conceptual god having a given form and all that that makes you separate from the god because you do not have that form and uh, you are not that form so you stand apart from that god therefore if only you can put the conceptual god aside in your understanding and understand clearly that god is not conceptual god is not an image god is not a physical entity god is not a bundle of cells like you and me god is love what is love love is not physical not psychological it is the real all physical and psychological in this world is unreal do you know the physical and psychological are the antipodes and like plus minus so the real manifests as the physical on one side and the psychological on the other side nyata is the psychological nyaya is the physical it is the same reality which manifests as both the subject and object both as psychological and the physical and therefore the real 
is neither psychological nor physical, being the origin of both. Are you okay with that? So then if it is neither physical nor psychological, what it is? It is love. That is what it is. That's why love unites. Whosoever it may be, love unites. And, and uh, therefore, that uniting element, love, that is what God is. And are you not love? Don't you see that your, your essential nature as love? If only you have any wisdom, you can look at yourself and see that I am love. The love can be self-love or sometimes the love can be the love of an object, etc. Therefore, the love is getting uh, distracted by other things, but essentially, it is the love. And so you identify with the body and therefore you love the body. Because you cannot, you cannot but love. Because the, the rose cannot but be fragrant. You cannot but love. Because you are love. And that love is God. So don't allow an image to separate you from the God. Image is different. Certainly the image is different. And you are not an image. But then God is not an image. God is something more than an image. You may worship God in an image, but then uh, it is the love in you that is what you are worshipping in an image. You have to understand that. You are not worshipping the image per se. People who worship the image per se, they are plenty in the world. They do not know what God is. Therefore, that love you are. Therefore, uh, you have to, uh, you have to teach yourself. You have to tutor yourself that you are the divinity. That is all you have to do. Unless you do that, any amount of uh, uh, preaching or teaching from outside has no value. It cannot uh, help really. Therefore, you have to be. Your own Guru, Atma is the Sadguru. So that is the essence of that verse. Okay? Then let us go to the next verse. I have a few verse, uh, questions also pending. I will address them. Uh, so next verse will be there with us for some time. And therefore I will take some questions also. Nitya Shuddha Vimuktai Kam Akhanda Nanda Madhvayam Satyam jnana manam tanjyat Parabrahm Now I have to say the same thing again. Nothing new. It is again the same thing. So sometimes I worry really. You ask me to come back to Phoenix in May and okay, God willing I will come back. But uh, I, I, I warn you give a warning, stern warning. I'll be saying the same things. Are you okay with that? Okay. You give me the same food, I will, I don't comply. Okay. I'll be saying the same things, you don't comply. Okay. So, our Brahmacharini Purna, she reached Tokyo happily and safely and I'm very glad to inform all of you. She was with us all these days. And uh, I was concerned about her catching the flight in San Francisco. The gap was less whether she will be successfully catching the next flight. She did it. I, I would have missed her, suppose. <laughs> but she did it. And therefore she is at home happy. And she has a doubt. So making a space in mind, that is what I was saying, have that inner space. I, I say this, uh, um, very wholeheartedly I say it, uh, very seriously I say it, you give up this uh, fascination or obsession with the outer space. Give it up. You had enough of it. How much space a person needs? There is a novel like that by Leo Tolstoy or something, right? So therefore this obsession with the outer space, forget about it. So you have a small bag, manage with it. Don't go for a bigger bag. You have a small house, live in it. Don't uh, struggle for a bigger house. So bigger, 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 forget about it. So 
you try to discover some space within. It is high time you do that, that inner space. That is what I was suggesting. So how do you, what do you mean by inner space? The thought is there, you stand apart from the thought. You are not the thought. That is the inner space. You are the thought. There is no space now. You, you, you are you and the thought. That is the space. So that is what is called uh, objectifying the thought. Also said, seeing the thought as thought without identification. Good. So making a space in mind is Atmanatma Viveka. Is that, is that what it is? Yes. That is the question. It is Atmanatma Viveka. You see, you can connect like that everything with everything else because the same thing is being told. So, in Atmanatma Viveka, we are examining Anatma mainly. We are not examining Atma so much. We are examining Anatma mainly and dismissing it. Anatma is Anatma. I am not the Anatma, I am the Atma. Like that, that is the method you followed. Okay? That we studied and that is a, a wide topic and we do it all the time. It includes the body and also other things of the world in the Atma, Anatma, Viveka. Okay? So leave it at that. That is one topic we have studied. And here we are particularly talking about thought. It is one of the many Anatmas. And then we are, uh, we, uh, the language is slightly different. The language, in Atma, Anatma, Viveka, the language is the one which is seen, Drishya, is the thought, and the one who sees the drish, drip, is Atma. That is the distinction. Don't confuse between the two. That is the language which we use. But now I am using slightly different language. Create that inner space. Appa, everything is ultimately the same only. Ultimately the same. But don't you see a slight nuance here, a different nuance? You pay for attention to that. You are asking like, you put a curry, sambar, rice and curd. All of it is not the same food. Of course, all of it is the same food. Who denies that? But curry is not sambar, okay? <laughs> there is a small nuance between the two. Therefore, Atma and Atma Vyaka is a big volume. Whereas, uh, inner space is a small nuance. So why do you want to put this into that? Why don't you leave them in their place? What is this all make a kichiti kind of thing? Not necessary. You may still put it in there, I don't mind. I only appeal to you, enjoy the small nuance. Leave it at that. And it can be helpful also. Then, that space is a crack. Crack is not a very happy word. Crack is a bit... A uh, bit violent word. So you should have a crack inside you. It doesn't look, sound nice, okay? Therefore don't say crack. So between Atma and Anatma, breaking wrong identification. It's okay, all of that is fine, but the language you have to refine a little, okay? And no need to mix, uh, to merge this Atma. Suppose you take the inner space, all this talk of inner space is, uh, is indeed nothing but Atma and Atma Viveka. Therefore, you just put it aside. Thereby, you miss a small nuance. So, better keep it. But, essentially, it is Atma and Atma Viveka. If that is what you want to hear from me, yes, my answer is yes. That's the point? Okay. Then, uh, one more question. It is about uh, Jnana Karma Samuchaya. This is a question. Now I will come to the verse. Verse the same thing I will be telling. Therefore I will come to it. Jnana karma samuchaya. The word jnana has two meanings. I am giving you a total meaning, a complete a comprehensive account. Jnana means two things. One is upasana and the other is understanding deep within. Okay? And uh, Upasana is also a karma, the mental manasik kriya. 
the action at the level of the mind is called upasana. And uh, therefore, the mental action is given a separate category called upasana, a different name to it. Now, though it is also karma, but the, you don't call it karma anymore. Now, karma becomes vachika and kayika, the verbal and the physical. That is karma. Verbal and physical is karma. Upasana is also action, but still upasana is upasana. We have given a special category. So, respect to that categorization. And now, all the three, jnana meaning upasana and the karma, verbal and physical, they go together. They are always together. And the emphasis is, they should be together. Why such emphasis? Because, quite often you see, the devotees, as well as the priests, who guide them in the karma, put all focus on the physical, on the verbal, and the mind is running here and there. There is no mind anywhere. Mind is not there, means focus is not there, understanding is not there, love is not there. So the ritual becomes very mechanical. That is not nice. You should have, you should know what you are doing, that is mind. And you should like what you are doing, that is mind. You should not be uh, like, uh, your mind is elsewhere, but do it. The karma you do it. You should not be like that. You should love the work you do. Uh, that is the basic thing, you know. Suppose you are doing a job and you don't like the job, how does it, how will your life be? Will it not be very painful? Eh? You see, I met a, 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 a train driver, the one who um, operates the engine. And uh, he will be looking at the pair of uh, rails all the time. And I asked him, how, how is your job? He said, I love it. It should be like that. You love what you like, what you do. Now, you do something and love something else, how will it be? Suppose you are working in Microsoft and you have all the love for Google. What kind of a thing it is? <laughs> it should not be like that. You, you love Google when you work in Google. You love Microsoft when you lo work in Microsoft. That is the way to live a hap happy life. Otherwise, you will be in conflict. Anyway, that is not the point really. The point is, the ritual that you do, you do it with love. And you do it with understanding. This I say all the time. People do pujas, etc. You should know what you are doing. That is the mind. And so mind you hand over elsewhere and uh, do physical things. That is wrong. Therefore, in Vedanta we recommend you should have Jnana, Karma, Samuchaya. Samuchaya means going together. Upasana, verbal and physical actions, they should go together. They should. And you get better results also. Phalam also will be superior. Got it? The Vakya is, Yadeva Vidyaya Karoti, Tadeva Viryavattaram Bhavati. Chandogya Upanishad, Prathama Khanda. Prathama Adhyaya, Prathama Khanda. The last mantra. So, yadeva vidyaya karoti, whatever you do, verbal or physical, do it with understanding, vidyaya karoti. Tadeva viryavattaram bhavati, it will become more powerful, viryavattaram, means it gives a better result for you. Therefore, jnana karma samuchaya, jnana meaning upasana. But in Sanskrit, in Shastra, the words have different meanings in different contexts. Jnana means Atma Jnana. If that is the meaning, that the meaning is always given. Jnana Yogaha. Here Jnana is understanding, not Upasana. And understanding has nothing to do with karma. Nothing to do with karma. Shankara says, the distinction between karma and Jnana is Parvatavata Akampyaha. The distinction, you cannot shake it. It is like a mountain peak standing there, pinnacle peak standing there. That much distinct they are. 
undaunted to combine them. Okay, jnana is jnanam, karma is karma. Karma is movement in time. Jnana is a immutable understanding, understanding of the immutable. There is no connection between the two. Unless you understand this, you make the mistake of putting jnana into the domain of time and thereby miss the whole thing. One poet said, the train I have to catch is late by one lifetime. You got it? That is what it will, that is how it happens when you put jnana into the time category. Means you never catch that train. Your life is over by the time the train arrived. The life is gone. Okay? So it should not happen like that. Therefore, jnana is timeless. It is now. It is instant. And it is not a movement. It is not. It, it is like a machine, a fan is rotating and bulb is glowing. They are not same. Fan is mechanical motion. Only example, okay? Bulb illuminates, fan rotates. They are two different things. So, jnana versus karma. And you try to make a combination of the two shows that you have missed the jnanam altogether. There are many thinkers. I am giving you a comprehensive account. There are many thinkers like Prabhakara, Mimamsaka, who said there is no jnanam, only upasana is there. Therefore, we don't, uh, jnanam is, we dismiss it. There is only upasana. For him, samuchaya is the only thing. Right? For him, he doesn't even admit anything called jnanam. Uh, therefore, jnana means upasana alone exists for him. And therefore, samuchaya works for him. Therefore, jnanam versus karma. It is not jnanam and karma. It is always jnanam versus karma. So, samuchaya means and. That and doesn't work. Samanvaya can work. What is Samanvaya? Samanvaya is different from Samuchaya. Samanvaya is this person pursues Jnanam, thus person pursues Karma. That is Samanvaya. And they live together. That is okay. They need not fight with each other. Okay? That is called Samanvaya. We live together. I do I pursue Jnanam. You pursue Karma. That is Samanvaya. Or, I pursued Karma at that time. Now I gave up karma and now I pursue jnanam. That is also samanvaya. In per one person's life, different stages. First stage is necessarily karma, not jnanam. Once you come into jnana, you don't go back into karma. A child born will not go back into the mother's womb. That is the example given. Okay? Therefore, first stage is karma, next stage is jnanam. In the same person's life. Samanvaya. Two different persons. One pursues jnana, another pursues karma. That is samanvaya. Okay? Between jnana and karma, samanvaya is possible, but not samuchaya. Is it okay? Then another aspect of the question. Then Shankara has done many things in his life. Is it not samuchaya? That is the question. Now, how do you know Shankara has done many things in life? You don't know anything about Shankara's biography. You don't know anything. Because Indians are, are Puranic people, Upanishadic people. Indians, Indian genius has Puranas in it, Upanishads in it, not history. History, we talked of history first time during the British Raj. And the first historian was R.C. Majumdar. He was the first historian. And then other historians came. Then a history department. Now Indian history is going on. Our history, we did not write it. They wrote it. British people wrote it. Now our people have ca caught up with them and trying to write history, which is good. But we were not historians. That's why date of Ramayana, we are not sure. Date of Kalidasa, we are not sure. In the history of Indian literature, there is a book. In Hindi, 
I think it is the author is Baladeva Upadhyaya. I, I remember like that. In that one chapter, the time of Kalidasa, there is a chapter. And uh, it runs to 20 pages. And after reading all the 20 pages, you hold your head because now you do not know anything about time of Kalidasa. <laughs> that is where it stands. Nobody knows when Kalidasa lived. And then when Shankara lived, even today in India, they catch hair of each other. Kesha Keshi. Kesha Keshi means you catch my tuft and I catch your tuft and we fight. That is Kesha Keshi. They are doing it even today about Shankara's date. What the point? Kesha Keshi. Nothing less than that. Okay. You see, in the world, they fight in, they form groups and fight. You have to rise above them. In Islam, they fight Shias and Sunnis, they fight. In Christianity, Protestants and Catholics, they fight each other. You go to Belfast, you will know. Okay? And then uh, in, among Vaishnavas, so uh, two names are there, like Shia Sunni. So uh, Vadagala, Telagala, like the two names are there. Uh, they fight with each other. Baha Bahi, Mushta Mushti, Kesha Keshi. <laughs> that is how they fight. And uh, about Shankara also, Shankara's date, in South, in North India nobody cares. Somehow North Indians moved forward. Sometimes we say in India, North-South divide. Like that they talk on televisions. Because somehow the consciousness uh, has uh, taken different shapes. Uh, in North India nobody cares when Shankara lived, etc. They are busy with Vrindavan, Radha, Gopika and all that. Okay? Whereas in South India, more conventional and uh, more uh, conservative, and uh, they are fighting. When Shankara, what is the Shankara's time? There are two major mathas. D. So one matha says, Shankara lived 500 BC. Another matha says, Shankara lived 725 BC. Can you see how? Is there any meeting point between the two? 500 BC, 725 AD. AD, not BC. Is there any meeting point between the No meeting point. You ask me, hey Swami, what is your considered opinion? I studied a bit. My opinion is both are wrong dates. <laughs> that is my opinion. I go with another school which is not very, very, uh, very, verb very noisy or very vocal, which is not very vocal, like these two schools. And uh, that school is Shankara lived 100 BC. Okay? We don't know anything about Shankara's life. There is no proper account of Shankara's life. Shankara Vijayam, like that there are poems, texts, 22 of them. All of them are poems only, not one of them historic. And not one of them has a historic accuracy. Therefore, put all the Shankara Vijayas aside, all of them, all the 22, put aside. You do not know anything about Shankara's life. Now, what to do now to know something about Shankara? There is only one way, and that is Prasthanatraya Bhashyas. Those are available. Brahma Sutra Bhashya, Ten Upanishad Bhashyas, Gita Bhashya available. And you study the Bhashyas. That is a, a, a that makes a big voluminous, a, a big voluminous teaching, and a, it takes some time for to study all of that. And you study all of that, that gives you a hint about the person of Shankara. He must have lived after Buddha and before Jesus Christ, that is before Christian era, based on some of the refutations. He refuted Nagarjuna. And therefore he must have come after Nagarjuna. And some of the Buddhist records are very clear. Buddha's date is Pakka. There is no doubt about Buddha's date. Why? 
Buddhism is not in India. It migrated away from India. That's why it is Pakka. <laughs> because outside India they are historians. And so Buddha's date is Pakka, 525 BC or whatever. And Nagarjuna came later. And Shankara refuted Nagarjuna. And also another Buddhist, Sri Lanka Buddhist scholar called Vasubandhu, etc. So you correlate all these things and arrive at some approximate date, reasonably approximate, that is 100 BC, not exact, okay, that is Shankara. And what he did in his lifetime, no hint at all, no hint at all. He established, this is controversial statement I am making. And uh, sometimes some of the statements which I make, they are, con they are truthful. But yet controversial. I cannot avoid it. Sometimes uh, you better don't go into that area. That is a way of doing it. Mostly I do like that only. I am not an aggressive person. I am a very timid person. Only I speak the truth. Otherwise keep mouth shut. So truthfully speaking, we do not have any evidence to say that Shankara established four real estates in the four corners of the country. We don't have any such evidence. He started this Mathas, etc. There is no such evidence. It is all a very emotional thing it is. And uh, so, for example, in Vishakhapatnam, there is Sharada Petham. Based on the name, it sounds like BC. But it is uh, started... Uh, uh, when I left the Andhra University and elsewhere, then it was started. It was started in uh, 2010. <laughs> Therefore, uh, based on the name, you don't say it is this, it is that. Therefore, the Pithas are there. There are many Shankaras in the world, in uh, India. In every generation, there are at least six Shankaras. And uh, each Pithadipati calls himself Shankaracharya. They should uh, call themselves by their own name. Why should they call uh, themselves as Shankara, creating such a confusion? And all of them call themselves Jagat Guru. <laughs> so, these are some of the tradition, uh, traditional or fixations, um, so which are considered sacrosanct, and uh, they, they do not convey the truth in any case. Uh, so, uh, therefore, you do not have any account that Shankara has established these mathas, etc. Therefore, by looking at the mathas and saying that Shankara established those mathas, and therefore he, he did not follow jnana, he has mixed jnana and karma in his life, is not a right conclusion. Okay? Understand? Therefore, in Shankara's life, there is no jnana karma samuchaya. And then, suppose a Mahatma is there, he knows the truth of the Self. He goes here and there. Going here and there is not karma for him. You understand? If Suppose a, a person is there. He believes that he is the karta. Then he is not a jnani. Suppose he knows the truth. Then he is not the karta. Though he is not the karta, a few things happen. The natural things happen naturally. Okay? Therefore, um, a few things are done. You look at the things that are done and then conclude that the person is a doer and then assume that the doership goes against the understanding of Atma. You are assuming, that's all. Maybe the person is not a doer. If he is not a doer, then there is no samuchaya between jnana and karma. Therefore, things are in good shape. That question is answered. Satisfied? Now let us move into this, this verse. So, again the same thing. Aham brahma eva. That is the, that is the vakya. Parabrahma aham eva tat. So, aham parabrahma, aham brahma eva. You see, you should not conclude anything about yourself. You should not conclude. You should leave it open-ended. Suppose you conclude, Aham Brahmanaha, you have concluded. Then uh, that becomes an obstruction in understanding Vedanta. 
Don't conclude. You can say only one thing about yourself, truthfully, truthfully. And that one thing is, I am. Other than that, you cannot say anything about yourself truthfully. Now this is a challenge between you and me. You examine it. I suggest that the only thing that you know yourself about yourself first hand is I am. Okay? I am that. That is not first hand. That that is not first hand. Somebody has told you that. I am this. That this is not first hand. It is second hand. Now I am challenging you. You tell me something about yourself which is first hand other than I am. Challenge. Any one of you will accept that challenge? No? Therefore, why do you want to conclude about yourself? You don't conclude anything. You see, a Vaishnava tells you, Vishnu is in the Vaikuntha, and you are the devotee of the Vaishnava, Vishnu, sitting here. That is what he tells you. Is it not a conclusion about yourself? Don't make that conclusion. A Shaiva tells you, you are not Vaishnava, you are Shaiva. Don't uh, accept his conclusion. So you don't accept their conclusions about you. You look into yourself. And uh, you ask, am I a Vaishnava? I don't know about that. Are you? Yes, I am. Am I a Shaiva? I don't know about that. Are you? Yes, I am. Are you an Indo-American? I don't know about that. Suppose if you relocate, then what will you do? I don't know about that. Are you? Yes, I am. Are you a male or female? This also you should overcome. The body. You see, you tell me, eyesight, is it male or female? It is beyond male, female, right? Eyesight, right? Except certain biological processes, there is no difference between male and female, except a few biological processes. So mathematics, suppose somebody wrote a book on mathematics. I hide the, I hide the author's name and give you the book. You read a chapter and tell me who is the author, male or female. Will you be able to tell? You will not be able to tell. I will show you an object and tell you, tell me who made it, male or female? You cannot. <laughs> right? Therefore, don't give so much, uh, don't put so much, uh, so much of uh, uh, importance upon the gender difference. Okay? And finally, I ask you, you abide yourself, you abide in I am, I am, as I am you abide. Now, in that abidance, are you male or female? It is not there. It is not there. Therefore, even that body identification you put aside and don't conclude anything about yourself and just leave it the way it is. I am. Then what happens? You know what happens? I am, with a variety of conclusions put upon it, becomes a samsari. I am, without any conclusions, erase every single conclusion. I am this, I am that, I am that, I am this, put a na, 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 na before everything. And leave pure, pristine, I am the way it is. That I am becomes a window to the truth. And that I am you can take and put Brahma by, by its side. Because Aham becomes window to the truth. Therefore start with that Aham. Totally free from every single identification and definition. Put aside everything single um, identification and definition. Take the pure pristine I am and hold on to that, then it will take you into Brahmanhood. That becomes the window to the truth. Brahmanhood is the truth. That is the Vakya. Aham Brahma 
ever, why ever, no doubt. This is there in the Old Testament, I said earlier. Moses finds a bush on fire on the mountain peak. Mountain means superior. Fire means knowledge. Jnana Agni. So God. So God is para, superior. He is not at our level. He is above. Para. That's why mountain peak. In India they make temples on the mountain peak. Why? This is the reason. God is not at the your and my terrestrial level. God is at a higher level. Physical. Therefore, they give a physical symbolism to that. That is the mountain peak. Okay? And so, uh, that's why we go to Himalayas. At least physically you go some 300 feet above, you may become jnani, hopefully. <laughs> so, you go to Himalayas. Anyway, so para, para is a superior above. So, and, uh, so the, Moses, he saw. He did not see like this, he saw like that. That means higher vision, mountain peak, bush on fire, fire is knowledge. And then he went near, he climbed and went near and said, who is it? The answer is, I am. You checked. I am not sure about the details. I am, I am, then he re reiterates. What do you mean by I am? Like that he reiterates. And then the answer comes, I am what I am. And uh, that I am what I am is condensed into one name. How it is done, I am not sure. Uh, it is Joshua. Yes. Joshua is Jehovah. J, they write J and say Y. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas I look at J as J. San Jos, I used to say. Then they have drilled into my ear, stop saying San Jos. Say San Jose. Then since then I have said he liked it. Anyway, so, by the way, I, this San Jos is important because I went to San Jos, which is the capital of Canada, that. Uh, Costa Rica. I went there. I was there. Zaljos. <laughs> that is the Joshua. That is Yehovah. Yehovah is I am what I am. That is the God. Really. Therefore, you stay with I am. Don't pull yourself down by putting something besides it. Suppose you stay as I am. Will your son be happy or not? He will be happy. Suppose you put father besides, I am father. Now look at it, look at the son's face. It will not be as happy. Therefore, you can do what all you need to do about the son. Educate him, bring him up, give him what all you have to give. And love him fully. But you need not put this crown na, upon your head, father. He did not put it. Every single time you put the crown, the young man comes and takes it and puts it aside and walks away. <laughs> and again next day you put it, he will quickly comes and takes and put aside and walks away. Why you, why you do this? Put it aside. Dear son, be happy. I love you. What do you want? Take everything from me. Whatever you want, you take from me. I love you. Leave it at that. Why do you say I am a father? Because by saying I am the father, you are denying Brahmanhood for yourself. That is the problem. That's why I am saying. Otherwise, by, by all means, go ahead and say I am the father thousand times. Okay. But you are denying what the real to yourself. Ultimately, we all end up in a burial ground. Who is father? Who is son there? Soda, understanding should be there. And uh, so, there are biological processes which gives birth to various life forms, including humans. And so, we, we, we pay our reverence to the biological processes, the laws of nature, which are the manifest God, and leave it at that. 
you need not uh, take a title for yourself. Become free from all titles, all definitions, all uh, identifications. Become free and stay simple. You, you declare to yourself, the one who declares this way to himself, he is already at the window to the truth. I am simple and single. What is simple? Simple means I am Brahmana, I am Kshatriya. No, none of those things. I am what I am, simple. That is simple. Then what is single? I am father, I am mother, I am husband. That, that is all uh, your imagination. Take it out. All of that you take it out. I am simple, I am single. You look at yourself, when I came into this world, what was I? I was simple and single. When it is time to leave this world, how will I leave it? Simple and single. Why in between so much of a paraphernalia? Why so much in between? That is all man-made, thought-made, thought-made. Why all this? Be simple and single. The one who is simple and single is, is the one who knows the truth of himself or herself. That the truth is, Aham Parabrahma Eva. Where, what is the para there? Para is, uh, you look at yourself. You encounter physio physiological or physical, one and the same. Physical is uh, very physical, uh, 40 kg, 50 kg, weight wise. Physiological means the pro life processes inside. So, you are not physical, you are beyond the physical, you are beyond the physiological, you are beyond the psychological, you are beyond the intellectual, you are beyond the linguistic, you are beyond the egotistic, you are none of these things, you are beyond all these things. Para. That is para. Okay. Parameshwara. Pareshwara also you can say. Parameshwara. What is the Parameshwara? There is a factory. There is an Ishwara for that factory. Ishwara is the boss. There is a home. There is a boss for that home. Like that there are multiple bosses. But there is a boss supreme. That is Parameshwara. Similarly, Para is supreme. Beyond all, all these levels which are known to the mind. The mind can understand all these levels. And the Brahma is not in the domain of any of these levels. It is beyond all these levels. Therefore, be humble. Don't try to conceptualize the Brahman. I know Brahman means now you have put Brahman into your intellect. And so your intellect is superior now. Who is, who is greater? The supercomputer? At the one who made the supercomputer. Yeah. So who is greater, God or the one who knows God? Knows God. Therefore, don't put God into an object of the, your knowledge. Don't use the intellect. That becomes very bad. I mean, the arrogance. I know Brahman. Those who proclaim themselves to be jnanis, are indeed Ajnanis. Okay? So, that is the mark of Ajnana, really speaking. Anyway, therefore, beyond intellect, beyond all this, the word beyond you don't like, then better like it. Because para is the beyond. Para is the beyond. So, therefore, I am the Brahman, which is beyond the physical and psychological dimensions. Aham Parabrahma. Is there any doubt in it? No. Eva. Okay. So, so what is this Parabrahma? Tat. Tat means two things. That which cannot be described in words. That is Tat. Otherwise, we don't use Tat. The moment Tat is used, you have crossed over the limits of language.
the sweet tattoo. So, uh, in every language it is there. You have seen something and say, that is something. You say, you have seen a thing or two and say, that is something. Means, something means that cannot be described in words. That is the meaning of something. That is the word tat. Tat is used to, de- to point out that which cannot be defined idamitham, this is so, you cannot define. Therefore we say tat. Why people say om tat sat? Because tat happens to be the name of God. Om is also name. Sat is also name. Om Tat Saditi Nirdeshaha Brahmanas Trividho Mataha. So that's why Tat represents God. You see, what happens is, uh, sometimes you do not feel good about it, but if you say it, others won't feel good about it. This is the dilemma. So, I read names of God. Names of God I am reading. I do not feel good about many of those names. If I say that, all the people who are sitting around, they will feel bad about what I say. Therefore, I gulp it and keep the poison (laughs) and I read. So, it says all kinds of things. So, uh, you, you don't want to give example also, I say, really. So, they are not uh, the descriptions of God. They are all um, manufactured by human thought. And uh, you say that. They are not names of God. There is no name to God. Don't you see it? God is nameless. Don't you see that? It is nameless. The moment you put a name, uh, you become superior to that. Because you give a name to it. And then, uh, uh, then you limit it. By giving a name, you limit it. God is limitless. Why do you want to give a name? No, no, we need a word for communication. Take it. Tat. That is the word. The word that communicates the incommunicable. That is Tat. You can see that. What is, what is God? That. Not this. That is God. Just raise your hand. You raise your both hands. That is God. Means my intellect, my words fail me in bringing the God into any description. That, that Brahma, that is none other than myself. Then what is that? It is Satyam. <clears throat> we will come to Satyam. And it is Jnanam. It is both Satyam and Jnanam. This is the big problem. Because generally, Satyam is outside and Jnanam is inside. Whereas Brahma is, it is neither, it is beyond, inside, it is inside, it is outside and it is beyond. Okay? Therefore, that is the meaning of Satyam Jnanam. What is outside is Brahma, what is inside is Brahma. Now the blessed thing cannot be both inside and outside. If it is outside, then it cannot be inside. If it is inside, it cannot be outside. Therefore, it is beyond both. Now it can be inside as well as outside because it is really beyond. Okay? So, we will see all that. Just I will address one more question. This question comes uh, all the time. I was saying a lot about desires, you know. In that regard, I will say a few things and conclude the class. In Gita, Sthita Prajna Lakshana begins with giving up of desires. Prajahati Yada Kama. So, the characteristics of a Jnani are presented before us. Then Shankara writes in the Vashya, you emulate these, these qualities. You take one after the other, you emulate them. You become a Jnani yourself. It is like that. It is like... Uh, a, a manual of uh, physical exercises. So they give a manual. What is your goal? I want to lose 10 pounds. 
Then he prepares a manual and gives to you. The uh, ten exercises are listed with photos. What is the idea? You follow that, you will gain your goal. Same thing, Stita Prajna is also a manual of a jnani. Okay? And uh, you follow that, you become a jnani. And uh, in, in the Stita Prajna Lakshana, the main thing, if you read all the verses, the main thing is Kamatyaga. That is the main thing. Apujyamana Majala Pratishtam Samudrama Puff Pravishanti Yadvat Tadvat Kama Yam Pravishanti, etc. Then Kama 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 Kami Nakama Kami. This Kama Kami ka koi chance nahi hai. Okay, so not only I remembered only three places. If you go further and further, everywhere. You give up, give up, give up, all desires you give up. That is the Sita Prajnarakshana. Not only there, you go further into the Gita, everywhere, Akama, so the desirelessness is highlighted. But then you come to a place, one verse, uh, so, Kama dharma viruddho bhuteshu, kamosmi bhatatarshabha. Oh, Arjuna, I am the Kama, which is not opposed to dharma among the life forms. Therefore, you cannot say, uh, Sri Krishna has opposed kama. Now, let us do one thing. In one place, Sri Krishna said, kama, I have to give up. In another place, Sri Krishna said, I am the kama. Therefore, uh, I follow the give up kama route. You follow the I am the kama route. Kya hai ye? Huh? What is this? Huh? Is Gita a bunch of contradictions? You have to look into it properly. Either dump this Sthita Prajna and hold on to Kamoham, or you examine what is this Kamosmi Vratar Shabha. You have to understand this. Shall I make it clear? To you? Shall I explain it to you? You see, in Gita, there are many vibhutis. Vibhuti means an unre- unreal you have to put before. An unreal manifestation of God is Vibhuti. You have to say unreal, otherwise Jagat becomes real. Like Ashwatha Sarva Vrakshanam. I am the papal tree among all the trees. Now where are the trees? In the Jagat. Papal tree is among the trees. Now if the trees are real, papal tree is also real, Jagat is also real, ye kya baat hai bhai? That is not Advaita. Okay? Therefore, taking in a particular context among trees, that is a fact, not truth. Fact of life. Among all the trees, Ashwatha happens to have some special features which make it divine. Okay? These are Vibhuti. These Vibhutis, where do you find them? In the Vibhuti Yoga you find them. Okay? But then not only in the Vibhuti Yoga, in the ninth chapter, I said, seventh, cha- seventh chapter, you find vibhutis. Ninth chapter also, you find vibhutis. If I remember correctly, there are three places where vibhutis are listed. Three places. So, this uh, Dharma Viruddha Bhuteshu is one of the sections where vibhutis are listed. Okay? Balam Balavata Masmi. Kamaraga vivarjitam dharma viruddho bhuteshu kamosme bharatarshabha. So where vibhutis are listed, therefore you, vibhuti is only just to understand and pay reverence, that's all. Vibhuti is not meant for emulation by the seeker of truth. Don't you see the difference between the two? So vibhutis are listed, you just take the vibhutis upon you. No, that is not the way. Oh, these are vibhutis. Vibhutis means mahima, the glorious manifestations. That is vibhuti. Okay? Therefore, you pick up a word from vibhuti and try to mix it with the sthita prajna lakshana and draw a wrong conclusion or try to negate or try to uh, put down what is said in this Sriprajnarakshana or dilute it or condense it, it is not proper. That is not the way 
Shastra has to be pursued. If you want to pursue that route, then I would recommend, there is a vibhuti called Chalam Chalayata Masmi. That is also vibhuti. Among all these casino players who play, uh, the whole day they sit there and feeding coins into the machine, or playing roulette, Russian roulette, etc. They are all my vibhutis. <laughs> Chalayatam chalam ahamasmi. The results are vibhuti. It is not easy. You do it, I will see. <laughs> so take that up. Take that up. Will you do that? I gave you one example. There are so many other examples like that. Therefore, there is a thing called prakarana. Sthita prajna prakarana vibhuti prakarana. You pay attention and respect the prakaranas. Don't pull out something from vibhuti prakarana and try to superimpose upon the sthita prajna prakarana to draw a conclusion of your liking. No, that is not how the Shastra proceeds. That is one. Then finally, I am concluding it. Finally, did you ever look what Shankara wrote there? Look at it. What he wrote in Sthita Prajna, you need not look. In Sthita Prajna, he raised a question. If we give up desires, how shall we live? That question he raised in the Puravaksha and answered it. You don't live by your desires. You live by eating food. Okay? And you are doing it fine. Don't worry on that count. So anyway, he raised that question and answered, look at that. In Sthita Prajna, so how a person can live if all the desires are given up? A family person, etc. And he answered it. You see that answer. Now I am not going into all that. Then uh, the Dharmaviruddha Kamaha Kamaha desire. You know what the answer he, what the reply, uh, explanation he gave? That we are all now ready for food, right? And then we want some tasty food, right? With not so much of uh, spice and all that, right? We don't want too much of sugar in the food, right? Are you listening to what I am saying? <laughs> so how many desires I have now? Huh? Similarly, we need a house which is not leaking. Back in uh, Sikindrabad, the place water was leaking and our friends have fixed it. I requested them, Apa, water is leaking. How can you live when water is leaking? Books get spoiled. Not only books get spoiled, other things also get spoiled. And then the place itself will be uh, in difficulty. Therefore, please do something about it. I requested them. They took it upon themselves with all enthusiasm. And when I came here, they started the work and finished and now it is ready. Now, do you want to put it into a desire? You have such desire. That is the Kama. Kama is to lead a meaningful life. And when you are hungry, you need some healthy food. When you are thirsty, you need some clean water to drink. You, you go after them, you seek them, you get them. That is the desire he is talking about. In that desire, I am. How can you say that? Because he said, when you eat food, I am the Agni, the digestive food. And when I am the Soma, that creates the food in the world. And when you are thirsty, you want water, I am the Rasa in the water. Raso, Rasayata Masmi. So, all of that is Ishvara. And therefore, that Ishvara, this, this Kama, means the desire for food, which is very inherent in the living being, that is the negative entropy. The moment the person falls dead, he will not desire food anymore. And he won't desire water also. Therefore, the seeking of food and water and shelter for leading a simple life that is the Kama, that is not opposed to Dharma. Any other Kama becomes opposed to Dharma. And I am that Kama. Means, if a person lives the life of Roti, Kapada, Makan, and in that simple life, 
my vibhuti is there. That is the meaning. It has nothing to do with the sthita prajna lakshana of giving up desires. So I have concluded this topic. Om Purnamada Purnamidam.